In today's video, we're going to be connecting our Discord bot to a MongoDB database, and we're also going to create a daily command. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is part two to a series where we create an economy Discord bot from scratch. So if you missed part one, I'll have it linked down below. Anyway, let's get started. As I mentioned, we're using MongoDB as our database, and there's two ways you can go about this. You can either use MongoDB Atlas, which is a cloud-based database service, or you could directly install MongoDB on your computer and run it locally. If you want to run MongoDB locally, I'll have a link down below to a guide that teaches you how to do that. In this video, we'll be using MongoDB Atlas since it's much more convenient to set up the first time. So open up your browser and head over to mongodb.com cloud, then click on try free. Here, it's going to ask you to sign up. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my Google account. Once you're logged in, click on build a database. And over here, by default, it'll choose the paid plan. However, we want to use the free one. So click on M0. Then choose your provider. I'm just going to stick with AWS. Then choose your region. Now, if this is the database you're going to be using in production, it's recommended that you choose a region that's closest to your server. In my case, it's just for development. So I'll choose Cape Town because that's the closest for me. Finally, go ahead and name your cluster. So I'm just going to call this one economy bot, then click on create. Now it's going to ask you to set up authentication so that we can connect it to our application. I'm going to set the username to under control and I'll auto generate a secure password and store it somewhere safe for now. Then click on create user. Now scroll down and let's see where this database can be connected from. If you're using this database for production, I'd recommend putting your server IP address here so only your server can connect to this database. Since I'm using this for development purposes, I want this to be accessible using any IP address. So I'm just going to use 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. I'm just going to set the description to access from anywhere. Then click on add entry. Once that is done, click on finish and close. Then click on go to databases. Now go ahead and minimize your browser and we'll come back to this in a bit. Inside your code editor, go ahead and open up your economy bot project. And the first thing that we need to do is install a library called Mongoose. This library will help us communicate with our MongoDB database. So open up your terminal and type npm install Mongoose. Once it's installed, go ahead and open up your .env file. And over here, we're going to create another environment variable and I'm going to call this MongoDB URI, and we're going to set this to our MongoDB connection string. A MongoDB connection string is basically something that we will use in order to connect and communicate with our database. If you're using MongoDB locally, you'd set it to something like this, and then the name of your database. But in order to connect to a remote database, we have to go back to our MongoDB Atlas, then click on connect next to your cluster name. Now click on drivers and over here, just go ahead and copy this connection string. Back in VS Code, let's go ahead and replace this localhost one with our connection string. And over here, we need to replace this password with the password that we created earlier for our user. Once that is done, go ahead and save your file and close out of it. Now inside the index.js file, let's go ahead and import mongoose. Now, what we want to do before we log into our Discord bot is we first want to connect to our database. So let's create an iffy over here. An iffy is basically a function that is called immediately. So make sure you have trailing parentheses at the end to make sure that it is called. We're also going to set this function to be asynchronous and we're going to take the client.login function and put it inside over here. Now, of course, as I mentioned, before we log into our bot, we first want to connect to the database. So the way we can do that is by saying await mongoose.connect and then passing in our connection string. If you remember, it's stored inside our .env file. So let's go ahead and say process.env. And then the name of the environment variable, which in our case is mongodb underscore URI. Right after this connection, let's also go ahead and add a console log statement saying connected to the database. Awesome. Let's go ahead and save this file and test our application. So open up your terminal and type node index.js. As you can see, it connected to the database and then it logged into our bot. 
everything seems to be working fine. So now let's move on to creating our daily command. So inside my commands folder, I'm going to create another folder called economy because I want to organize my slash commands. And inside this economy folder, I'm going to create a file called daily.js. As usual, all our commands will be exporting an object using module.exports. And the first property is, of course, data, which is the structure of our slash command. And we're going to give this a name of daily, of course. And then I'm going to set the description to collect your dailies. That's enough for the structure of our command. If you're not comfortable with this, you can also use the slash command builder like this, and you can set the name directly over here. However, I'm much more comfortable with the object approach that I said earlier, so I'm just going to revert it back to this. Now, we also have to make sure that the object we're exporting has the run function. From the run function, we can destructure our interaction object. And for now, we're just going to reply to this interaction using interaction.reply. And we're going to say collecting your dailies. And let's go ahead and save this file. Let's go ahead and test this out. So open up your terminal and restart the bot using control C and typing node index.js once again. So our daily command was registered. So let's head over to Discord. Back in Discord, we're going to try to run the command. And as expected, it does say collecting your dailies. So now running the command is cool and all, but we aren't actually storing any data anywhere. We have connected our application to our database, but we can't just throw a bunch of data inside it and expect it to work. We have to structure the data that we want to store using something known as a schema. So we're going to create a folder in the root directory called schemas. And inside it, the first schema will be our user profile schema. So let's create that. The first thing that we want to do is import the mongoose library. And from this library, we're only going to be importing a few things. The first one is going to be schema. And the second one is going to be model. Make sure the model is lowercase m because this is a function. Once that is done, let's create a variable and call it user profile schema and set it to a new instance of the schema class and pass in an object. So this object is how we want to structure our data inside the database. The first property is going to be user ID, which is going to have a type of string. And this is required, so we're going to set required to true. Now, here's where you want to decide if you want your bot to have different user profiles for different servers. For this series, I'll stick to a single user profile across multiple servers. However, if you don't want that, you can set a guild ID property like this, which will also store the server ID. Next, we also need our user's balance. So let's go ahead and create that property. This one is going to have a type of number. And we're going to set the default value of this to zero. Of course, you can set a default starting value of say 100 or 500, anything that you want, but I'm just going to set it to zero for this series. Next, we also want to store when the user last collected their daily reward. So I'm going to create another property called last daily collected and set this to a type of date. Now I'm going to do one more thing, which is completely optional, but I'm going to pass in a second argument, which will have timestamps set to true. What this will do is automatically create two other properties, which store when the user profile was created and when it was last updated. We may or may not need this later down the line, so I'll just have it here anyway. The last thing that we want to do is, of course, export this schema as a model so that it can be used in other files, such as our command. To do that, we're going to say module.exports and set this to the model function. And the first argument here is going to be the name of this model, which in our case, we can just call this user profile. And the second argument will be the schema variable itself. So we can have this right here. Awesome. We can now save this file and close out of it. Now, back in our daily command, we're going to import user profile from our schemas folder. Now, let's decide on how much we want to give our users every day. So let's create a variable and I'm going to call this daily amount and I'm going to set this to 500. Of course, you can set this to whatever amount that you want. And if you want it to be a random amount, make sure to have it inside the run function so that it generates a new amount every time this function is called. Since we have a fixed amount, I'm going to have this variable set outside so that we don't have to redefine it every single time. So the first thing that we want to make sure is that this command is executed inside a server. If you want people to be able to execute this in direct messages, 
that's totally fine, but I very much prefer that a user does this inside a server. So I'm going to add an if statement and say if interaction dot in guild. And of course, this has to be if interaction is not inside a guild. So make sure to also add an exclamation point. And if that's the case, we can reply to this interaction by saying interaction dot reply and pass in content. And we'll say this command can only be executed inside a server. And because I want this message to be dismissible, I'm also going to add ephemeral and set it to true. Now make sure to also add a return statement so the function does not run any further. We're now going to have a try catch block which will handle any errors. If there is an error, I'll just console log it and say error handling slash daily and then paste the error right here. Inside the try block, the first thing that we want to do is defer a reply. So we're going to say await interaction dot defer reply. And because we're using await, this run function has to be asynchronous. The next thing that we want to do is fetch the user profile from the database if it does exist. So let's say let user profile and set this to await user profile, which is our schema dot find one. And then we're going to pass in a query, which is user ID. And then the user ID in this case is, of course, the person running the command which in this case is interaction.member.id. Now, as I mentioned before, this data may or may not exist in the database. So let's check if it does exist. So I'm going to say if user profile, then in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to check the date the user last collected their daily reward. So I'm going to create a variable called last daily date and set it to user profile, which is the data that we just fetched dot last daily collected. And this may or may not exist. So I'm going to add optional chaining right here. So if it does exist, I'm going to run a method called to date string, which will basically convert the date to a date string. Next, I also want the current date as a string. So I'm going to say const current date and set it to new date. And then of course, I'm going to run the to date string method as well. So we have two date strings that we can compare to each other. So let's say if last daily date exactly equals to current date. This means the person is trying to run the command again the very same day. So in this case, what we can say is interaction dot edit reply. And I'm going to say you have already collected your dailies today. Come back tomorrow. And of course, make sure to return once again because we don't want this function to run any further. Now let's handle if this user profile does not exist. So we're going to add an else statement right here. And if that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new user profile. So we're going to set the user profile variable to a new user profile. And inside, we're going to pass in the user ID, which is, of course, going to be the person running the command, which is interaction.member.id. Finally, outside of all of these conditions, we can go ahead and add the balance to the user's profile and also update their last daily collected date. Any code outside over here is going to be executed if the person is coming back another day or if the person's user profile does not exist at all. So I'm going to say user profile dot balance and I'm going to say plus equal to the daily amount that we just defined up here. Next, we also have to update when they last collected their dailies. So we're going to say user profile dot last daily collected and we're going to set this to new date, which is the current date. Finally, we have to update this data inside the database. So let's say await user profile dot save. And once that is done, we can tell the user by saying interaction dot edit reply. And inside, I'm just going to say daily amount was added to your balance. And then I'm going to add a new line and say new balance. And then I'm going to show them their new balance, which is user profile dot balance. We can now give this command a try. So let's save our file and restart the bot once again. Back in Discord, I'll try to run the daily command once again. And it seems to work just fine. If I try to run it once again, it's going to say I have already collected my dailies today. Come back tomorrow. Back in our MongoDB Atlas, we can go to Browse Collections to actually see our data. Over here, you can see we have user profiles. And if you see carefully, we have my user ID with the balance and when I last collected my daily, which is of course right now. Additionally, there's also created at and updated at, which was because of the timestamps that we set to true. Now, if you guys are having any issues with your code, 
then be sure to join my Discord server, which I'll have linked down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.